What is up everybody? In the last video, I showed you the new addition to the Project Race Car channel and that is my 2000 Honda CRV. In today's video, we are going to be replacing the clutch uh, system in the uh, CRV because I'm not sure when the last time it was replaced. So naturally we have a big job in front of us, um, but we are going to get started. We have to take the wheels off. Uh, we have to take the axles out. Uh, get the air box and stuff all out. We'll have to drop the transmission uh, and then put in the new flywheel, new clutch, and new pressure plate. Uh, and then slap everything back together and take it for a ride. I'm not sure when the last time uh, my clutch was done in this car. Uh, I talked to the previous owner uh, and he didn't know it either. So I have no idea how the clutch sits right now. Um, it could be in really bad condition and needing to be replaced or it could be pretty fresh and we'll just be doing the job as a peace of mind. If you're really nice on a clutch, it'll last for 100,000 miles um, without any issues. And again, this is a pretty big job because we have to take the axles out we have to drain the transmission, take the wheels off, um, but I'm hoping that it all goes smoothly. Uh, I don't work on this car a whole lot, so we are kind of going to be going as we go. What I'm first going to get started with is getting the car on jack stands uh, and then removing the wheels. So next we're going to take out the air box uh, just so that we can get access to the top of the transmission. Uh, this gets really bulky. Um, and then we'll take it off from the actual throttle body uh, and take out all the air boot so that we have access to, because there's parts that we need to get to down there too. So Okay, now that the air box is out, we're also going to disconnect the battery while we're up here before we even jack up the car um, because we're going to be taking out the starter. So, uh, I'm going to start with the negative, then work to the positive, and then it'll be good. Also, the first day back in Colorado and it snows. There's like, just, it's, the snow is the worst. I'm so glad that we're in Austin now, but we're going to keep making progress on this. So next, after we got the wheels off, uh, we are going to uh, pull out this plug. It should just be a 3 8 ratchet, but it's just a drain plug for the transmission, uh, and we have a pan ready. Come on, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Big money. Nice. Hey, it looks good. Looks real good. So next thing that we're going to be working on, uh, I'm going to hammer out these axle nuts. Um, just this little, little bend. Uh, and then I'm going to be using an impact. Uh, and it's a 36 millimeter. Um, I'm going to be, yeah, using the impact. It's a lot easier. I highly recommend an impact for this job. Uh, that way you don't have to put the wheel back on and then use a big breaker bar. Um, so we're going to work on that. And then also this uh, lower ball joint um, with the castle nut. Uh, so I'm going to work on those two uh, and then I'll get back to you. All right, so it is the next day. Uh, I went ahead and just, uh, the axle nut was not coming out. So I went ahead and sprayed some PB Blaster on it. Uh, and I am just trying to stay warm out here. It is a solid 31 degrees as a high. So I'm missing the warm weather, but we're gonna keep it going and trying to get through it. So my goal today is to drop the transmission uh, and it, this is just gonna be a multi-day kind of job because um, it is a it's a lot of work. So um, I would not plan to do this job in a single day. Um, it can be done naturally. Again, it could be in a couple hours, but I'm moving slow uh, and just trying to get through it. So this axle nut is not coming off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tire back on uh, and then just do it with a big breaker bar because um, this thing has not been removed. So. so after straight up cracking and breaking a half inch breaker bar, and using that big boy and that big boy as a breaker bar and the nut still not even coming off we're just gonna have to cut it I've used the impact I've tried everything I've sprayed PB blaster on it so we're just going to have to uh, cut it off um, that's probably gonna be the best way so I'm gonna start working on that make sure to get a lot of safety gear um, I have a welding helmet that is designed for cutting as well so I'm gonna go ahead and use that um, just to protect my face in case the Dremel 
happens to break. You can honestly never be too careful when using a Dremel. They're just, they can be sketchy. So make sure to wear the proper safety equipment and I will get back to you when the bolt is cut off. And after a little bit, um, I shredded it so much that it lost all of the strength and then the impact just took it off. Um, what's funny is that I pushed just a little bit on the axle and it went straight through. So um, I'm going to try to clean up these threads because uh, you can see that I damaged them a little bit. But I'm going to make sure that uh, the bolt fits on that. I might have to buy a new axle, but I'm hoping not. I for sure need a new axle nut, though. So um, I'll get that ordered as well. But... We're going to keep working. Okay, so I took a break from the axles uh, and let the thing soak. As you can see, I cut myself. Um, but I went ahead and took out the starter. Um, and it's just two 14 millimeters. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, pull off all of these C-clamps. Get the uh, There's a whole lot of plugs um, on the transmission. That's the speed sensor and uh, like just all of the stuff. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna remove these little cotter pins um, and then we'll go ahead and pop those off uh, and then put the cotter pins back. And so we're just going to try to remove all the stuff from the transmission. Okay, I finally just got the axles out and this for sure seems like the hardest part of the job. Um, it's really a pain to get on those, get those things off um, especially just like the location of the bolts and the location of kind of fitting everything off. Really difficult, but um, those are out. So then the next step should be removing everything from the transmission, uh, taking off all the, like the service plate, and then we'll work on getting all the other, like the ground wires and stuff like that off. So I just took off my inspection plate um, I'm honestly thinking that this is the original clutch. Uh, naturally, I know that this is the flywheel, but um, there's a lot of, like, not good stuff in here. Um, not sure what this is. Might just be clutch material, uh, because I think that this is the original clutch, um, which means that it has 175,000 miles on it. Which is quite impressive, but that bad boy does look old. But we have a new pressure plate, new flywheel, uh, so we are making progress. My goodness, has it been a day. Um, I have been crawling around underneath the car getting... I've washed my hands three times today, so um, it's been pretty rough. But we are making progress. Um, I believe that I got everything disconnected from the like top side of the transmission, so that's good. Um, I got the starter out um, and everything like that. Got all the clutch pedal and everything disassembled, taken off. Um, so I believe all that's left is like three more bolts in the transmission. The axles are out. Um, and then just the transmission mounts. And then I believe that that's all of them. And then the transmission just pops right out. Um, I got the drive shaft off, so that was also good. Um, I had to use a 10 millimeter um, and use the back side of it, the 12 points, because it's a 12 point. Um, I stripped one, so I almost didn't get it off. Um, but it, it made it, so. Uh, the issue is, is that a lot of these bolts are just like, they have not been touched in 23 years. Um, so they are just all toast. Um, and it's been a little rough, but we're making progress. Um, I think I'm gonna clean up a bit tonight and then call it good for the day. Um, I made a lot of progress, but we, uh, there's still more to get done. So again, this is a very big job, but uh, I believe that this is the original clutch that came in the car. So it's lasted 175,000 miles and who knows how much longer. It'll be interesting to see what it actually looks like inside the car. So um, I'll show you guys when I get the transmission actually dropped uh, and what that actually 
is looking like inside. So, But until the next day, I'm going to clean up and call it good. All right, it is a new day, and I am just as dirty. But we are making some good progress. Um, I believe that I have everything off of the top of the transmission, um, and I believe that I have all the bolts out. So let me show you. So uh, what I did is I took a screwdriver and I just set it in here. And I don't know if you could tell, but the transmission is separating a bit. Um, so naturally I don't want to pry on that because not all the bolts are out. Um, this transmission mount, uh, which is a 17 millimeter, needs to come out. Uh, so I believe that I'm just going to, I might have to pull it off from here, but um, so we'll get this bad boy out and then um, down in there, uh, there is a 17 millimeter. Um, there's one right here, uh, the starter bolts, this one, the one down there. Um, so I'm counting six bolts. There might be seven. We're going to find out. Um, I believe that it's separated from that transmission mount now. So all that's holding up the transmission is this one, this mount down here, um, and then the connection to the engine. So right now I have a jack under there, um, but we're gonna, I'm gonna double check and make sure that everything is going well. Um, I might take a break for lunch, but... Yeah, uh, just take your time, move slow with it, because uh, you don't want to rip any cords out or do anything like that. So take your time with it, and uh, yeah, we'll keep going. Okay, I just got the last bolt out after just forever. Um, word of advice. If you take anything from this video, it's that if the bell housing is not coming off with a pry bar, there's another bolt. Um, so I missed a bolt and I was just prying um, and I got half of it off but the other half wouldn't budge. So I started loosening up the bolt when I found it after finding it under some wires um, and then sure enough uh, it started loosening the bell housing. So, so there's a 14 millimeter um, I don't know. It's down there. Uh, it's right there. That 14 millimeter. Um, you have to move the clutch bracket, the clutch. But you can see that the training is actually separating. So um, I'm going to take a quick break and then we'll drop the training. Okay, the transmission is finally out. And so I was mistaken. Um, if you look here on the pressure plate, um, right there you can see that it says Lux so uh, that's a, um, a clutch company and so this thing was replaced but um, it for sure had some wear so if you look at the actual grooves like it's getting down there so we probably had another 20,000 miles of good driving um, but it, it yeah it's always good to replace things and not have to worry about them so um, this is for sure a two-man job. Um, I had my dad's help, and this thing is, it was a pain to get out, but um, we just used a jack to, uh, and then prying off. We had to take the transmission mount off of the transmission for it to clear uh, this bad boy. So, um, but I'm going to spray the bolts with PB Blaster, and then get back to it tomorrow morning, so... It was a long day, but successful. So I just pulled off the flywheel and the uh, I cleaned behind here, but um, the rear main seal looks like it's in good tact. Um, knock on wood, but I'm not gonna replace this bad boy. Um, so we're gonna put on a new flywheel, torque the bolts down, uh, and then throw on the clutch. He just put the flywheel bolts on and I got them all torqued down. I torqued them down to 80 foot pounds and it's looking really good uh, and what I did is I put a bar around the crank uh, that way it wouldn't turn and you'll want to put brake clean on the front of the new flywheel okay so the transmission um, I'm gonna try to put it in by myself 
Um, I had help taking it out, but we're going to give it a shot. Uh, I torqued down the pressure plate bolts to 20 foot-pounds and the flywheel bolts to uh, 80 foot-pounds. And I put blue Loctite on them, so the transmission should be good to come back up. Um, I'm hoping that it'll be easier than taking it out, but we shall see. And the new clutch kit should come with a new bearing as well as a new throw out bearing that goes on the transmission. Uh, I always, always, always recommend replacing these. They may not be bad right now, but you always want to replace them because the transmission is out. So the transmission is back in and it took three of us to get it up there. Uh, what we did is we used a jack and then two people to balance it and one to look and man the jack. As you can see that there is a small bit of gap, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly torque down the bolts so that it seats properly. So with this job, uh, I would highly recommend not taking off the coolant lines. Um, if you don't have to deal with coolant, I suggest not doing it. But we got the transmission back in. You can see that I closed up that gap. Um, so the transmission is fully seated. Uh, the mounts are back on. Um, so there's no jack under there. So I'm just going to start connecting stuff. Um, put up back on the distributor. Uh, try to find out where all the bolts go. Um, so we are making some good progress. Um, all we have left to do is put the axles back in. Put the axle nuts back on. Um, I'm just going to torque them, uh, they're supposed to be like 180 foot-pounds, so I'm just going to tighten them as much as possible and then call it good. So um, I'll, it has a notch in the axles um, so that the bolt doesn't come off, so I'm going to tighten them as much as possible with the tires on, with it on the ground, um, and then call it good for that. I had my dad and my brother help me put the transmission back in. The all-wheel drive system makes the transmission pretty big and awkward, um, so it's a little bit like lopsided. So it was nice to have three people helping, one with the jack, my dad pushing on the transmission, and me lining it up. So we're going to keep going, we're going to get the axles in, and then I will take you guys for a test drive. So the last thing that we're going to do is fill the transmission and then we'll put the wheels on, torque down those bolts when the car's on the ground. But I got the axles in uh, and all the bolts hooked up, so we are in a good spot. Uh, I'll torque down these bolts a little bit, um, I'll pop off the little Honda symbol uh, out of the thing so that we can get this on the ground. And uh, the transmission all-wheel drive and front-wheel drive takes about 1.8 quarts. So it's going good. We're driving. It's 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 running good. Um, the only thing is, is that the steering seems a tiny bit off. But other than that, it is it is moving. So I'm gonna go back and make sure that all of the bolts are tight, uh, especially on the suspension, uh, the axle bolts, uh, all of that stuff. So um, the car is still getting used to like the suspension being off and all of that type of stuff. So uh, I'm also going to clean the garage and do all that but uh, the clutch is driving really really nice um, it's very very good uh, I believe it's a Xetti something like that um, but it's really comfortable really good and easy to drive and then the throw out bearing is fantastic on it so the clutch feels nice and light um, and it, everything feels smooth so I'm super happy about it uh, I haven't stalled but I'll just have to be easy on the clutch uh, for the next little while for the break-in period. But, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it helps. If it helped you in any way, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. And until next time, my name is Ryan. This is Project Race Car. Have an amazing day. Peace.